One thing I noticed about all this pro-black stuff, and I, I was part of it. I grew up in it. This is what many of these uh, zealots don't understand. I grew up with the Pan-African mindset. I grew up with all that pro-black mindset. I grew up in it. I have over 40 years of experience with your mindset. But just like the Bible said, when you were a child, you spoke as a child. Unlike you who have never grown up and you don't want to grow up because you already know. You remind me of children who think they grow. You are children who think you grow, but you don't know. Because if you was an adult, if that child was an adult, then that child should act and behave and do as an adult, but you can't because you're a child. So when I was a child, I spoke like a child and I understood like a child. I didn't no, but as I begin to mature, you're supposed to be able to grow. When I was a child, in my community, the one so-called black leader that our people looked up to was the Reverend or Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., they did not talk anything. They did not talk about Stokely Carmichael. They did not talk about the Black Panthers. They did not talk about any of these militant type groups or the Nation of Islam. It was Dr. Martin Luther King. And then, and that was in the South, Mississippi. And then we moved to the Midwest. And the community where I grew up at, it was still Dr. Martin Luther King. They did not talk about Malcolm X. They did not talk about Nation of Islam. They did not talk about Noah Jolie. It was Dr. Martin Luther King. And what I have noticed in the blackity black pan African type community, what I've noticed is they are a bunch, you are a bunch of haters. You are jealous and you are envious. Listen to how they talk. How come they don't talk about Elijah Muhammad? How come they don't talk about Marcus Garvey? They don't have to talk. They talk about who they want to talk about. If you want to celebrate Elijah Muhammad, if you want to remember Marcus Garvey, that's your business. You want the people to remember. They remember who they like. You don't determine that. And you should think about that. I was part of that. I never was a, a hater on Dr. King like that, but they made me not like him because of that rhetoric, because of that mindset. They hate brothers and sisters. Now, you can correct me. I'm always, you can always correct me. I'm, 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 I'm not a know-it-all. To my knowledge, I've never, I never heard Dr. King speak nasty and profane or evil against none of them. Oh, Dr. King is a coon. Uh, he, he works for the CIA. He, he, all these other stuff. You never heard those type of words come out of the mouth of Dr. King. He practiced his Christianity. He practiced his nonviolence with the enemy. He also practiced his nonviolence with knuckleheads. Black folks. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Because you don't. Because you think you know it all. You think you got it going on like that. What are you producing? You ain't produce a damn thing. Except a bunch of talk. While you hiding behind a rostrum or a lectrum or whatever you want to call it, Dr. King actually and his people actually facing the enemy physically, one-on-one. -on -one. 
you have to be forced. You, you have to defend yourself. You never took no offense. You talk about non-violence. Blackity black, pan-African, pro-black pro is way more non-violent than Dr. King. Way more. They have done nothing violent. And then they get their ass whooped trying to talk about self-defense or whatever and be crying or, or whatever. You are laughing stop. You are impressed. You don't impress nobody. But you're a bunch of haters. And this is the way when you on top, you're always going to have other people that will respect you because you're on top. Then you have haters and jealous ass folks like these people that's pro-black, blackly black, whatever they want to call themselves. I don't know what new Nubians, uh, Hotep Hoppers, I don't know what they call themselves. This is the thing that I know about Dr. King. As I've grown out of that stuff. Unlike them, Dr. King actually physically faced the enemy. That we know. On videotape. That we know. We know that Dr. King did not live a lavish life. We know the King family, his mother, and I think his, one of his brothers and himself, they was murdered in the struggle for whatever reasons. Dr. King came unto his own and his own received him not. That we find because one of the first persons that physically hurt him was a black woman at a book signing she got close enough and stabbed him with a letter opener. She did not like him. There's a myth that, that black folks love Dr. King. There's many black folks that did not love Dr. King. A lot of soul brothers and sisters who liked things just the way they was. A lot of soul brothers and sisters saw Dr. King as a troublemaker because they scary. Don't disturb anything. Leave things the way they are. We already have enough problems. Because they was cowards. But they was brave enough, or you brave enough to walk up to Dr. King and stab him, but you're not brave enough to walk up to the Pecklewood, the one in the South that's lynching you, raping you, discriminating against you. You're not, you don't have enough, or you're not brave enough to attack the real enemy. But a poor man that sacrifice, this is another thing. Dr. King was a young man. All these people, Brother Malcolm, the Black Panther Party, stuck, all they was young people. They don't know. They never fought no government before. They don't know nothing about. All that they know is we are under pressure. We're getting hurt. And we got to try to do something about it. They didn't know. So we judge these poor people and usually even in America it's usually the young people that stand up and it's the old ass geezers that sit back in the cut. Don't do that. Stop that. Don't. Trying to hold, always holding the young people back because they're not, they don't want to take it. They ready to do something about it. There's always some old geezer preacher, some old person and calm down. Don't do that. Brother Malcolm even said, in order for us to change our condition, you have to get angry and you got to stay angry. We don't stay angry. Even when we listen to all this supposed to be revolutionary stuff, you get fired up for a few minutes and then you calm your happy ass down. And one reason why you, you're going to calm, calm your happy ass down because the reality is you are afraid. You don't want to lose your car. Dr. King and those people, their houses was fireballed. They was beat up. You don't want to go through that. You sit back on a computer running your damn mouth. You have not experienced nothing. You have experienced nothing. Where my paper at? <laughs> You've experienced nothing. You live in a a comfortable life and the comfortable life that you're living is because of the sacrifice of people like Dr. King 
and those who did something. Whether you like it or not, you, you benefit from it. You're not throwing it away. You benefit from it, whether you like it or not. Dr. King spit on uh, by white folks and uh, black folks too. House set on fire. None of y'all house been set on fire. None of y'all house been firebombed. Ain't no government. You can show no evidence. No government is listening to your conversations, doing a damn thing to you. You want to put yourself on a on a pedestal, put yourself in a place like you done you what do you, what do you do? That religious stuff. Ain't nothing dangerous about religion. Religion makes you docile. Because instead of doing something yourself, the God, and you hear them say it, God going to do this. And God, the people in Ukraine not waiting on God. Russia come across the border. They're not waiting on no God. They're asking America for tanks and planes and, and whatever so they can defend themselves. You don't hear none of them in Ukraine talk about, well, God, gonna, they ain't talk about no God. I don't hear them say nothing about no God going to do a damn thing. It was a man. It's men that caused our condition. Not nature. Not a tornado. Not a hurricane. Not a flood. It's men that caused this. And it's going to take men to stop it. Or you just get. You become extinct. You become somebody's slave. You just have to submit to that higher power. One or the other. Some of us would rather die. But these people are such, they hate, such haters on Dr. King. Nobody don't have to put your people who you think is better. How are, okay, put the work, one work against somebody else's work. And that's what I did. And we, whether you like it or not, we benefit from the actions of nonviolent protests more than all that blackity black stuff. I was part of it. And I have to be honest with myself. What am I? What are we? We're not changing no laws. We're not gaining no resources. We don't have a military. What the hell are we supposed to be accomplishing? What did they what did Marcus Garvey accomplish? We already had businesses. Christian brothers and sisters, we already had businesses. The problem was the Peckerwood domestic terrorism. It ain't the fact that we don't know how to create business. We don't know how to do for self. We have an enemy in our country and the government is allowing these predators to hurt us and stop us from doing, taking care of ourselves. It's not that we don't, we know how to take care of ourselves. We've been doing it ever since we came off the slave plantation. And hear these people talk, do for self. We always do for self. And they wasn't talking all the black, we got to do this because we black. No, because we're an American citizen because I'm a damn human being. Has nothing to do with that black and black. And we wouldn't spread in our Christian religion because there was different religions. You have the Baptist, you have the Pentecostal, you have different versions of Christianity and our people was Christian. They didn't run around where well, you need to do this uh, pray to the Christian gods. We just created business so that we can take care of ourselves. If you want to come to church on Sunday, my brother, if you want to come to church Sunday, my sister, please do so. In the meantime, we try to take care of ourselves. In the meantime, I'm just trying to survive. We're not trying to promote religion. We're not trying to promote some unity with some Africa because Africa ain't, help, ain't doing a damn thing for us. All that dumb nonsense. And so this is the reason why they crucified Dr. King because he was the best producer and they're happy as just like they, they hate on Oprah Winfrey, they hate on Tyler Perry, they hate on Black Lives Matter, they're just a bunch of haters because they can't produce nothing. The only thing they know how to produce is great orators, people that can speak. That don't pay your electric bill. That don't stop a police officer from blowing your brains out. Your pretty pro-black Pan-African talk. It doesn't. 